Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the opening sequence in the Bumblebee movie and what can that tell you about the future, the future of the media for Transformers, and the future for what product's going to be available. We're already seeing it taking hold right now. We're seeing it in all of these shows. Let's get into it. These figures that are in the works right now are surrounding the Bumblebee franchise and there's there's a reason why I think but this opening sequence really shows us a lot this is kind of fanfare to us who actually really care about the series and and the lore and uh, the original G1 cartoon and the show and all of that and so it's it's something that we want that's something that that we wanted for a long time and having a battle scene like this and setting it up is is awesome i really enjoy the idea that they did this and it makes me kind of excited about what they would do for another movie and how much of a presence that the actual transformers would have because i think one of the problems with the bayverse movies is that they were so human centric and not transformer centric which we'd want more transformers and less humans and this scene this is really more along the lines of what i would like to see I'd like to see don't want to see an hour and a half of just this but maybe an hour and 20 minutes of it <laughs> so I'm gonna dig into it and I'm going to show you a few things so let's go ahead and start talking about it now we know that it's taking place on Cybertron this is the war going on on Cybertron it's uh, looking like the Autobots are losing this fight and are fleeing which is pretty much what's going on the first bot that we see is Ratchet and want to point out they're all in Cybertron modes. So looking at Ratchet in a sort of a Cybertron looking mode, that really does make sense. And, you know, I was like, yeah, I like the designs. They're not, not quite Bavers, but not quite G1. They're in the middle. And so to me, I can accept this is a Cybertron mode. So uh, Ratchet looks, looks like Ratchet. We know who he is. We know who he's going to be. So imagine if they go to Earth, will the bot change for him? And so that's the first thing I want to talk about is will the bots look different if they're taking on a different alt mode? And I say yes. I say that it makes a lot of sense. And so would the next installment of the movie have them Ultra G1? Who knows? So the next shot I've got here showing two characters. And I want to say that RC looks very G1. But a couple other things is... This design that she has makes me think they've got a figure planned for her eventually. Because just just the kibble on the arms and, and, and the way the backpack is obviously just the front end. I mean, this it doesn't look like stuff's compiled into it. I think they got a figure going. And I think it's a decent looking RC. In fact, it's a, it's a great looking RC. And I can accept the kibble on the forearms. And that does seem very mainline kind of... Uh, Hasbro-esque in the way they did that. We also see Cliff Jumper on the right, and we also know, if, if spoiler if you haven't seen the movie, but he does get killed. <laughs> he, he's gone. I don't know why Cliff Jumper dies so much, but he does die. And uh, so I don't know. I would still think they'd make a figure out of him, which, I mean, they are making a figure out of him in Earthrise, but, but I really want to see what they do with this RC. So next we get into Wheeljack, and... Wheeljack looks, looks, you could tell he's Wheeljack. And I, I think that it's pretty interesting with, with one other side note to this whole scene. A lot of people are saying that it was a last minute addition to the movie. It was something that wasn't planned all along and they did it in the end. But uh, yeah, I can't validate that because I looked at a few different sources. I couldn't find it to validate it. So I'm just throwing in as rumor that this whole scene was just a throw in. But I also... I like the way Wheeljack looks and he follows that whole looks like he would be in Earth mode and I know they're making him in Earthrise so I mean there's that but Will in the next movie he looked more G1 that's that's a curious thought and I know not everybody wants an ultimate G1 look and I think what they're giving us with Earthrise is probably as close to G1-esque we're gonna get but it would be interesting to see now another character I thought was really cool is, is this is obviously a brawn and you know nobody's made a figure of this guy because he's only got like two seconds of screen time, I think. But 
But it's really cool that he's in there, and it's cool that you could tell he's uh, G1, and this is a Cybertronian mode. This is him in as a Cybertronian mode. So when you look at Siege, and you're thinking like a Siege kind of line figure, like this would have been a great Siege candidate right here, and looking like this. So this, this looks pretty cool. But could we expect to see Braun maybe in uh, the third part of Earthrise, or a later wave of Earthrise in an actual Earth mode? Now we got a shot of uh, Decepticon Seekers, and the first thing I want to say that really kind of bothers me, well I guess it should bother me, maybe it shouldn't bother me, but these are obviously Seekers, right? So why is Blitzwing the exact same design as these guys? And we see from this picture that they're Tetra Jets, so you know it's kind of interesting with the way they went with Siege, we got the Tetra Jets, I don't know, I don't know if they'd revisit that at all. Because once we get to the second movie, everything's going to be Earth modes, obviously. And we'll talk a little bit more about the possible second movie here in a bit. But, you know, it's feeling like we got a lot of the siege from this scene. Now, here's the funny part. This is Starscream, not Blitzwing. <laughs> and so Blitzwing has pretty much the same design, but uh, some different coloring to him. So... I don't know. So here we have a Starscream, and it's interesting. Uh, I don't know how far we would see anything go with these with this design because when they do, of course, get to Earth, they would look different. But it's it is interesting, and their take on the Tetra Jet and their take on how the Seeker and the Triple Changer look so similar. Now we do see Shockwave in a scene here, and I think that uh, Shockwave, well, he looks interesting. He looks pretty close to sort of a G1-esque with a slight Cybertronian change, but I would think uh, Shockwave probably would change the least from this movie to another movie or because he really is not Earth mode at all. He kind of falls into the RC category. And Soundwave, which is interesting, so I want to bring up a point in this whole thing here with Soundwave, he leads the Decepticons in this. And if you watch this, he's given commands, he's given orders, and he's the leader. Where's Megatron? Now, there, there's a site that I found called Digital Spy, and they said that uh, they were going to reveal a shot of a G1-esque Megatron frozen in the Hoover Dam, uh, for whatever reason, somewhere, I guess, in the Bumblebee movie, but they cut it, or they just never put it in, but it was planned to show that. So that would have been interesting, that would have been cool, but uh, during the time, of course, of this this whole uh, battle, what was Megatron during this battle? That's an interesting question. No, we got this green cone head down here in the bottom of this picture I thought was interesting, and I'm, I'm curious as to what's going on with that green cone head. Who is that? Uh, <laughs> that's a storm. So here's a shot showing if you could really see all of the, the the ones flying in the sky and all the ones standing on the back and all that, that how outnumbered the Autobots are in this shot. And so that's definitely something that they wanted to convey and to, to go through this the hopelessness of all of these Decepticons against eight Autobots. So here's a shot and you can count there's just the eight that they had in this little battle and uh, then they take off. But they do say there's more Autobots scattered across the galaxy so that they could just throw in whatever character they want to down the road, which is an interesting way to go. I do want to show Optimus Prime, and which they're making so many different versions of this guy right now. And, and in the background, you also can see Ironhide, which they never really showed a good shot of Ironhide in this whole thing. It was blurry and moving and stuff, so that's finally one of the best shots of Ironhide when he's getting into his little uh, escape pod there. So then they flee, so it gets you wondering about the second movie, and there was a lot of rumor about the second movie be calling that uh, B2 uh, Optimus Prime, and I think they dropped the whole idea of calling it Optimus Prime and just calling it Bumblebee version 2, and so I do have a little snippet to show you. Now from that uh, Digital Spy page, they say that the release date is going to be October 1st of 2021, so they are working on the Bumblebee 2, it is, it is in the works and it starts filming sometime this year. So with that, it's it's kind of interesting to see what route they're gonna go, and I think this is really gonna be a real big homage to G1 collectors 
and it's going to be kind of an exciting time for G1 collectors, in my opinion. But we're going to be interesting to see how G1 they go, if they stay with more of Cybertronian bot, Cybertronian bot modes. But as we can see, there's no shortage of product coming out right now or being announced or in the works for just the first B-movie. And a lot of the stuff from the B-movie is really coming from that first scene. And then, like we see here, we're going to finally get from Hasbro a Jeep version of Bumblebee, which I like that idea. Uh, the Optimus Prime that only appeared for, you know, just a couple of minutes. There's like three different versions of him. And you've got the... we got highly articulated statues that are that are in the works or already released we also have uh, multiple different versions of the blitzwing character coming and of course you would know we've got the bumblebee so i really want to see some of these other designs that i showed you such as rc but i want to touch on one point about bumblebee if he was cybertronian why did they not give him his cybertronian mode and so now that kind of confuses me as to hasbro hasn't done it either so they, he's back reverted to a car, and I really wonder why in like Earthrise and Siege we don't see the Cybertronian mode. We don't see his airplane mode. It's only a car. So that's something that confuses me also. But characters such as RC, or even a Hot Rod, or even Springer, or there's a lot of them that don't really have Earth alt mode. So the entire figure and character and everything, Cybertronian, should, could look ultimately G1 in a way and that's why I'm excited about characters such as RC because there would be no need to change it. Then I'm curious about every other character and how they're going to shape up and how they're going to look. Let me know if you're excited at all about any media coming out whether the B version 2 movie or the B movie 2 however you want to call it that's coming out in 2021 interests you at all. Let me know. Like, subscribe to Dear Hanger out.